From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, and welcome to another all-new episode of Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer, and I'm sitting here all on my own without Roger Charlton, because Roger is out Christmas shopping. He still has to find a Christmas present for his wife, which is, as we all know, not that easy because Roger, like all men, wants to find a really nice present for his wife. So let's just keep our fingers crossed for him that he can find something in time. There's one good thing about Roger's problem, though. It gave me an idea of what to do for this podcast. Now here's the topic for today. How can you find things that you weren't even looking for? This is what presents are, and this is sometimes what words can be for you. There are words that you maybe never look up in a dictionary, or sometimes you're looking for a word, but you don't even know what the word is called in your mother tongue. Now that's a hard one, isn't it? But as always, the internet can come to your rescue. Let me give you an example. The other day, a student asked me. Um, what do you call these fingers that spectators hold up in basketball games to cheer on their team? Now, these things don't exist in Germany, so no word for it here. But what you can do is you can go to a website where they are. In our case, this would be the website of a famous basketball team. I thought, what basketball teams do I know? Well, the Dallas Mavericks, the famous German plays there. So I entered this uh, uh, www Dallas Mavericks. I'm doing this right now, and here I go to the website, and they have a link that leads you to the stuff you can buy. Of course, fan T-shirts, caps, and all that. And you have to look a little bit. Oh, there it is. You can see it. It's a foam finger. That's what they're called. So this is how you can find things on the internet. You can go to a shop and see where you can buy this. This even works with Christmas stuff. So sometimes you may not know what the Christmas items that are all around you nowadays are called in English, and you might be curious about it. Um, so why don't you just go to a Christmas shop? So for example, I already opened this in my browser: www. Christmas Time UK. And maybe you want to know um, what is the thing that you put your Christmas tree in called? You know the metal thing that holds it so it doesn't topple over. Um, if you enter the German word into a dictionary like Leo.org Christbaumstände, it won't give you anything. But here in Christmas Time UK, you have products that are related to Christmas trees. And these are, of course, Christmas tree accessories. And what do you know? They have twelve so-called Christmas tree stands. This is what they're called: Christmas tree stands. Another cool site to find new words that you may not even have looked for is, believe it or not, IKEA or IKEA or whichever way you want to pronounce this producer of furniture. They sell a heck of a lot of stuff. If you want to find Christmas products, for example, why don't you just go into the search bar, enter Christmas, and see what they come up with? I'm just doing this here right now. Hey, here's a cool word that I didn't know. You know what these little things, metal shapes, are called that you um, use to make cookies with? You know the things that you place on the top of your dough and you press, and then you have a, a star or I don't know an angel. Well, these are called because they sell them here, I can see them, pastry cutters. So here you go, pastry cutters. That's a new word that I just learned, which brings me to kitchen words. Uh, kitchen words are something that I don't know. You won't get this in a lot of dictionaries, words that for objects that you can find in the kitchen. This is what uh, IKEA is very, very cool for. You just go to the link that says kitchen, and you, then you click on cooking, and you get a whole lot of cooking accessories. And let me play a game with you. Um, would you know what these metal objects are called that you place hot pans and hot 
plates on so they don't burn your table? Well, IKEA will tell you they're called trivets, which is something I didn't know about. You might call this method word shopping. And the best thing about it is it won't cost you a thing. It'll only teach you new words. Um, come to think of it, I will have to be going now. I'm going to have to do some Christmas shopping of my own because I myself haven't bought everything yet. Um, so I only have time to wish you all a Merry Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy it with your family and we'll be hearing from each other again sometime next year on the next Ropecast. Goodbye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.